In the first video of this section of the course, I introduced you to the idea, the mathematical framework of the singular value decomposition, the SVD. And in the previous video, I showed you the low rank approximation of that picture of Albert Einstein. Now, we evaluated that picture in a rather qualitative way. So we were just looking at the different low rank approximations and kind of saying, you know, yeah, this one looks okay, and this is a little more detailed, and here you can kind of recognize the picture. So that was fine, but that's very qualitative. What I'm, we're going to do in this video is a bit of a more quantitative investigation into the quality of a low rank approximation to a picture. And at the same time, we're also going to compare two different pictures. So one is going to be Barack Obama and two is going to be Donald Trump. So I have pictures of these two gentlemen. You are probably aware that they are two presidents of the United States. And basically we're going to do low rank approximations of both of these pictures. And we can compare the error or the divergences of the low rank approximations to the original pictures and basically see who does a better job, Obama or Trump. All right, so let's begin. Here I have these two pictures, Barack Obama and Donald Trump. So I'm going to read these two pictures in and then use the function I am show to look at these two images. So these are their official pictures that I took from their Wikipedia pages. And they're both the same size, approximately the same size. I think one is actually 424 and 423. Yeah, and they're both 496. So it turns out that uh, this picture is one pixel wider. There's one extra row of pixels. But otherwise, these pictures are pretty comparable. They have the, roughly the same color saturation. They have the same facial expression. The, the pictures are clipped at about the same place relative to their head and so on. Now, I'm not claiming that they are exactly identical except for the identity of the individual, but or overall to a first degree approximation. These are similar pictures. Okay, so we need to flatten these. You can see that these are both three-dimensional pictures, three-dimensional objects. And I want to flatten out the third dimension so that we just get a two-dimensional matrix. So that's what I do here. So now they've become a like a spreadsheet of numbers. Here is the SVD, exactly the same as in the previous video. And now I get separate SVD for, uh, for Obama that's indicated with O and Trump indicated with T. Okay, so now we can look at the singular value spectra from these two pictures. So these are the singular values, and you'll remember from the first video in this section that these singular values correspond to the importance of the different features, the different feature dimensions of the data. So one way to interpret larger singular values is that the system is a little bit more complex. So in this case, the picture has more features, for the picture of Trump compared to Obama, and that's why the singular values are a bit larger. Another way of interpreting spectra like this is that a spectrum that falls down more quickly has a lower level of complexity, so a relatively smaller number of components can capture more of the variance in the data set or in the image, whereas a spectrum that decreases more slowly is more chaotic there's less overall organization. Again, that is not a statement about politics or policy. That is simply a mathematical interpretation of the singular value decomposition. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is show the first five components of each image. So let me actually first run this so you can see what it looks like. So this is similar to what we did in the previous video with the picture of Albert Einstein. So this is the rank one approximation. So this is the single most important feature, or at least what the SVD considers to be the most important feature of Obama and Trump. And then you see two features, three features, and so on. And it is pretty interesting that already by the time you get to five features, you can already recognize these two individuals. Again, this is rather qualitative. What I want to do is assign some numbers to these images. And the way that I'm going to do that, one way to determine the quality or the accuracy of the reconstruction of a low rank approximation is by computing the error or the difference between the approximation and the original picture. 
So basically I can say how much different is this image from this image. Now these two images are going to be really different. This image versus the original is going to be also quite different but less. And you know as you add more and more features to the image, to the low rank approximation, it will look closer and closer to the original full rank picture. So that's what we're going to do here. And actually what I think I'll do is run all of the code in this cell and show you the movie that it creates. And then I will go back and explain each line, particularly the important lines like this. Okay, so let's see this movie. You can see over time there's an increasing number of features that are being added to the image. And you can see these get crisper and crisper. They look more and more like the original picture. Here you see the error magnitude. And I'll show you quickly how this is computed. So you take the original picture minus the low rank approximation. So that difference, and then you square all of those differences, and then you sum them. So this is also called the sum of squared errors. And when you look at the plot of the sum of squared errors as a function of the matrix rank, you can see it's higher for Trump compared to Obama, or at least their pictures. So there's more errors, there's more mistakes in the Trump picture compared to the Obama picture. Again, not a statement about politics or policy. That is simply what the singular value decomposition is doing. Now I'm going to go back up to the top of this cell and make sure that you understand what all of these different parts of the image are doing. So let's start again going through this line by line. So we set up the figure, clear the figure, start with an empty figure, that's CLF here. Now I'm going to plot random placeholders for these two pictures. So this is pretty interesting that we started from, actually let me run this again. So you see that I'm just starting off with pure random noise. This is not a picture of Obama or anyone else. This is purely randomly generated numbers, which the same size as the picture. Now the thing is, I'm getting a handle to this object. So let's see, this is, the handle is HO, the handle for Obama. And let's look at all the properties. So there's a lot of properties of these images. And the important one that we are going to use here is C data, which stands for color data. You can see that's a matrix. It's the same size as the picture. And that corresponds to one data point per pixel in the image. So I can change this image data. So I can say set H O. I want to change the C data. And now I'm going to change it to some new random numbers. So ran size Obama. Now I'm going to press enter and you can watch what happens here. So the noise changed. The image changed because I replaced all the color values at these pixels with new random numbers. And that I'm going to use here in this for loop that loops over the different ranks over the number of precisions for the low rank approximations. And I'm updating the C data and that's going to change the appearance of the picture. Okay, so that's for this part. And then axis off and axis image. So that just leaves us with a picture instead of having an axis with tick marks on here. And here again for the title, you can see that I have a handle to the title. And similarly, we can change things of this title using the, in particular, we want to change the string. So I'm going to say set title O, and then I'm going to change the string to test. So you can see it now says number 44 for the 44th president. And now I change it to test. And we can change other things. You can change the font size, and we can make that like 56. So that's kind of ludicrously big but just to give you an idea of how you can change things here. All right, so then all of this code is pretty much exactly the same as for the picture of Obama, except that the handle names are different. So let me recreate this with a normal looking size title. And here I'm doing a similar trick. So I'm getting a handle to a plot. So let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so these errors have already been computed actually, but I can run this again to reinitialize. And now, let me see, I have to redo this. Okay, so these approximation errors are initialized to zeros. So you see this whole thing here. Now the idea is that inside this loop, 
rather than replotting from scratch, so rather than running plot lines like this from scratch, I'm going to simply update the X data and the Y data inside this loop. Now, this is advantageous for two reasons. One reason is that running the plot commands over and over again like this is slow. So if you have a loop and you want it to update smoothly and quickly, then this is not a good idea. This is slower, particularly if you have lots of plots or if you're showing complicated data or a lot of data, this can be very slow. And furthermore, this kind of flickers the screen. Every time you redraw a plot, MATLAB will flicker the screen because MATLAB is first clearing everything off the screen and then redrawing it from scratch. And that's not what you want. That's okay the first time you're showing a line or a, a, any kind of graph. But if you are updating a graph in a movie, you don't want MATLAB to delete the entire axis and redraw it from scratch. Instead, you just want to change the values of the data points that are already in the plot. And that is why we get handles here, and then the handles are updated here rather than drawing a new plot inside this loop. All right, so all of this stuff, this is just setting up the figure. Now we're inside the loop. Here is the low rank approximation. So this is very similar to the code you saw in the previous video with low rank approximations with Albert Einstein. We take the first ith columns in u, the first i singular values, and the first i rows in v or v transpose. Then there's this updating. So we update the color data, update the title handle, compute the approximation errors, and update the plots to show those approximation errors. And then you have to pause. So I've shown this in previous videos in this course, but I want to do this one more time again. So if you don't have a pause function in here or draw now, that's the other option you can say draw now, then MATLAB is going to update the plot kind of behind the scenes. It won't actually show it. So if I run this code now, you're not actually going to see a movie being generated. You see nothing. This is just what was left from the previous instantiation. And then you see at the very end, when you get out of this loop, you see the one final result. So you need to pause for a little bit, and that will both give the viewer a chance to actually look at and interpret the results, and it gives MATLAB an indication that it should draw the plot before finishing this loop. So I'm gonna run through this movie once more so you can see the whole thing. So you can see the errors are getting smaller and the pictures are getting sharper.